everyone, welcome back to Kaz Outdoors. In today's video, I want to share with you seven items of hiking and backpacking equipment that I really wouldn't want to be without. I just love these items. Now, I'm not going to review the items in depth. I sometimes I've done that anyway in previous videos. I'm just going to go through them all and tell you why I really like to have them with me. Let's take a look at my first item. Now, these are not in any particular order. It's my dry robe. Now, this is heavy and you can see really thick the lining on here. And obviously, I won't take this in my backpack. I won't take it with me, but this always, always goes in my car. It's huge. Let me show you. It's basically a changing robe, so it's fantastic for outdoor swimming. But you can see how big it is. It's supposed to be really big. That's the idea. This is a medium and you're supposed to have lots of room inside. So, so if I zip it up, you can see that you can, to get changed, you can just wriggle your arms inside and then you've got all this lovely space inside to get changed in. As I said, I'm not doing a full review of it. I will do one another day because it's such a useful item to have in your car. So if I'm going on a hike, I mean, you must have had those times when you've been out and got absolutely soaked and by the time you get back to the car you're cold so cold this is amazing just take off the wet gear and pop this on you've got a lovely big really big hood as well there and, and there's huge pockets here so it's just fantastic it's also really good this is kind of not quite related to the hiking but if someone's coming to watch you say do a trail run or a park run they'll be starting up again in the next few months if someone's coming along to watch you give them one of these to wear they'll be snug as a bug in a rug so item number one as I say not in any order but item number one is a dry robe in your car for when you get back from your multi-day trip your day hike your outdoor swim your trail run whatever you've been doing so while we're on the subject of coats and jackets, my next item is my Decathlon Down Jacket. I think it was 40 pounds, it weighs around 250 grams, and it's been fantastic. Um, I, let's pop it on, show you what it looks like. Apart from the color, which I just love, because down jackets, as you know, can be really, really expensive. And I use this one. <laughs> There it is, lovely. So I use this one for when I wake up in the morning in my tent and you always feel chilly, uh, even in the summer. Always put this on and it works a treat. Instantly warm, really cozy. Morning. Well, what a lovely morning again. Oh look, I'm matching my tent. I also often shove it into a dry bag and make an extra kind of pillow with it so it works like that as well. But I found it to be super warm, obviously you've got to keep it dry but that's the same with any down jacket and I have no complaints with this Decathlon down jacket. I will put links to everything in the description below just so you can have a look at them and see which items I'm talking about. And it packs down to nothing, you can really make it into a small ball, it's just fab. My next item, carrying on with the yellow, is a sit pad. Um, not really a lot I can say about that, but honestly, the number of times I have used these, I must have about five of them, um, they're just fantastic. You just never feel the cold of the ground coming through when you're sitting on one of these. You know when you're in the woods and there's all those tree trunks and they're fantastic to sit on, to have a bite to eat or something, but you don't want to sit on all that green moss and green slime. Sit pad, really light and just so cheap and I wouldn't go without one. The next item I wouldn't go without is my Rab Kangri waterproof jacket. This is, I think I can go as far as saying it's the best waterproof jacket I've had. I have done an in-depth review of this which I'll, I'll leave a link to the video so I'm not going to do that now. Watch that if you're interested in this jacket but it's just kept me super dry um, and I just roll it up because you know this is the UK so you've got to expect any weather any month of the year so my Rab Kangri jacket 
The next item on my list is my Nalgene bottle. I think this one may surprise you a little because they are, they are known for being really strong but also not the lightest to take with you. Okay, let's talk about the reasons I take it with me. So let's say I'm camping overnight. I can't possibly get into my sleeping bag without a hot water bottle and I use this to do it. If you watch this video here, you'll see how I do it. And the first thing I want to show you involves my Nalgene water bottle. I honestly don't know how I would have managed on some of my camps without this as a hot water bottle. It's just the most comforting thing and I am quite a cold sleeper and it just makes the difference really between me having an enjoyable night and just bailing halfway through. Okay. So I've just boiled up the water and poured it into my Nalgene pot. And this is going to be my hot water bottle. So let's pop the top on. Here we go. What more could you ask for? So in that last video I've just shown you, you'll notice that I used my woolly hat just to put a, a layer between me and really the heat coming through the bottle and also really to try and hold the heat in the bottle a bit longer. With the hat it would last a maximum of two hours and then I could either sleep through or usually I would wake up and heat the water up again and uh, off we go. So, so what I made for my bottle was this little cosy. It was really simple. You can you can see how I did it. I just I just cut um, a square of the insulation, um, left a gap at the bottom so I could fold it in, rolled the bottle round, obviously cut this off, sealed it up along there, and then at the bottom it's just a question of pushing all this in, quite simple, and sealing it down, and then. Just to make it a bit stronger at the top, I just put a layer of tape around the top there. So now, before I pour the hot water into my Nalgene bottle, I just put it into my cosy. It has to be quite firm because then it retains the heat better, I've found. Um, that's how it is. And the Nalgene bottle is really good and leak proof and this lasts, the heat in this lasts up to five hours. I was really, oh, I was over the moon, absolutely over the moon. Because this is my biggest luxury, I think, on a camp. Got to have a hot water bottle. But getting back to the hot water bottle idea, if the worst did happen and I was injured or couldn't go on for any reason, and I was still, so obviously I'm going to start getting cold, um, I, I, will make, I would make the hot water bottle in the day as well. It makes such a difference. Um, so I'm happy to put up with the weight and I will take this with me on every hike and every camp and every backpack. It's a bit of a race against time at the moment to see if I can get this uh, video finished before the heavens open, but we're fine at the moment. So next item is walking poles. And yes, I was one of those people who wasn't sure at first and resisted for a little while before I used them. I just thought they'd be an extra thing to carry that I just didn't want to be bothered with. When I did finally decide to give them a proper go, and by that I mean try them several times rather than just the once, I was a convert. Um, these are my Black Diamond uh, Carbon. They weigh 300 grams, a pair of them, and they are like a three split system so you just it's so easy you just click it into there and into there and there we go and it's super light the thing is when you start to tire on a long hike using the poles will help to distribute the weight so you know you most of the weight is obviously going through your hips and your knees and your legs this allows a little bit of the weight to be to be taken on by by your shoulder muscles and your arms so you will tire less rapidly if you use your poles. I've definitely found this to be true. They're also fantastic for getting across streams, you know, they give you extra balance to get across streams and also for checking out what depth the stream is or cracking some ice and seeing, you know, how deep that is under there. Uh, 
also another reason another use I've found for them recently I didn't want to have to do this but uh, they're good to fend off cows I've found that cows are becoming for me more problematic um, and all you have to do is just make yourself look bigger with the sticks and just wave the sticks towards them you don't need to touch them you just wave the sticks towards them and they back off so you know I definitely recommend have a go with the walking poles don't just do it once do it for two or three hikes and uh, let me know what you think So for my final item, I want to talk about rucksacks and not just any rucksack, but for me, Osprey rucksacks. So look here, we've got mummy, daddy and baby. And as you can see with this one here, this is waiting to go out on the trails again. That's my Osprey Aura 65. And that's the one I'm going to take when I do like the Cotswolds Way and Hadrian's Wall and the Coast to Coast and things like that. So that's 65. And then the middle one here, which is useful for up to say two or three nights wild camping is the Osprey Eja 48. And the baby on the end here is the Osprey Tempest 30, which I use as a day pack. Again, I'm not going to give a full review in this video. I'm just going to say that I find them the most comfortable. If you saw my kit packing list after I'd done the South Downs Way, or actually the video when I did the South Downs Way, and I was complaining about the discomfort of my rucksack. These are amazing. They're just so comfortable on your back. I mean, I guess rather than knowing all the specs, what you really want to know is how comfortable they are and how good they are at carrying the gear. I really like the fact that with Osprey, everything is so stretchy. Can you see? It's really, really stretchy. Look at that. And on the front here, you can get so, so much in them. Turn it round. You know, you've got the mesh system there, which gives you a nice airflow through here. I think they've really thought about all the different features on their, on their backpacks. It, they have great systems for carrying the hiking poles. Sometimes they'll come, let me show you. They have great features, I think, on their backpacks and really good ideas for carrying things. For example, this loop here is used for your walking poles. So I'll go through here and then go around the back, down through there. And it's a really super comfortable way to carry it. So yeah, big Osprey fan. Just to mention that I haven't talked about the things in this video that we all, I hope, are taking with us, like a first aid kit and maybe a survival blanket or something like that. Um, the kit I've mentioned today, you may have different ideas on things you will take, whereas with the first aid kit and the blanket and, and things like that, uh, I hope we all have those with us every time anyway. So what are your must-haves? I'd love to know. Um, I've put a few other things I take with me and I did struggle quite a lot to come up with seven. I probably could come up with quite a few more, but I really wanted to talk about the things that come with me every single time. Um, and those are they. So let me know in the comments below what you consider your essentials for going out backpacking, wild camping or whatever. Thanks for watching and I hope you found the video useful. See you next time. Bye.